Out is built up. Good run up there, yeah. And Monkey, yes, it's a run up like Michael Holdings, but he wins the toss. It's Dale Lewis, however, who gets the kick down towards the half forward line. Sydney going to the left of screen and looking desperately for the first score. Lachlan through. Tumbles it, but it only goes short. Look at the fierce tackling. Mickey McGuan's playing his 150th today. We wish him well. Lewis into the middle towards Derek Kickett. A stab pass is going to be okay. And he finds a Maxfield, the former Tiger, Stewie Maxfield, forward of centre. The drop punt goes into the square, in towards where the big guns are. Francis does the spoiling on Kelly from behind. They pounce upon him. Look at Kelly in the tackle. Well, Peter Carey has uh, decided that that was a push in the back. And a pretty tough start there for Tony Francis. Classic uh, Kelly coming up here, one of the most fearsome tacklers in the business. I think Peter may just have had a little bit of early game nerves there. So Francis goes over the top. And Crow brings it away for the Pies towards the halfback flank region. Gavin Brown is there pushing the ball along in front of him now. And he's taken off it. A chance for them to go forward through. Scotty Russell been in pretty good form. Handballs in towards the middle towards Williams. Puts him under pressure. But they may have assistance there. Comes the way of Mark Orchard. Now an opportunity in towards Paul Corbett. Rocker has the football 25 metres out and almost directly in front. Well, that's uh, the classical way of playing the Sydney Cricket Ground. You don't want to get caught out in these very wide wings here. And as we saw against uh, at the MCG last week against Melbourne, Collingwood just continually bringing the ball back into the corridor, playing that uh, more positive style of play that we talked about in the media. Good start here by Damien Monkhurst and the Pies. Distance not a problem. Accuracy not a problem. The Pies are away and so is Big Sam. Well, a shade unfortunate, I think, for the Swans there. It was a, a little bit uh, of a ticky touch with one down in the goal square. At, uh, there attacking in. Nice handball there and good awareness by Paul Williams. And this was pretty smart play here from uh, Damien Monkhurst. No doubt he could have had a shot himself, but the higher percentage was to get the ball to Sav Rocker and he made no mistakes. Yeah, I watched him as he kicked that, he really was pumped on Kirst to get that ball, he was excited about his kick and so he should have been. So back in the centre and we'll have another ball up. I think when you go into state it's really important to get away to a good start. Couldn't agree more, Jerry. Any game particularly but uh, certainly with home crowds, the raw factor as it's known in footy. Packer plays in the middle. Monkhurst working hard in underneath. And deserves a free kick. Well done for the big fella. He really went after that footy. And it's a terrific start from him. Rocker, Dunkley. Rocker almost over the back. Dunkley recovers well. And then score high. Oh, no. Well, from here, it looked to be a bit high. But uh, I guess he made no attempt. Well, here is the replay. What do you think? Yeah, I still thought it was a bit high. <laughs> no, what? Darren Creswell is uh, running with Mick McGuan. So Mark Richardson from 30 metres out. Deliberate approach. Kicks and has kicked Collingwood second. So Mark Richardson and the two key forwards get a goal apiece. Pretty lively start from the Pies. And once again, uh, Big Sav being involved in this one. Getting the ball out of the middle of the ground. And here we go, a little bit of an attempted fend-off. I noticed the uh, arm came up there instinctively also, but the tackle was pretty good. Great start by Collingwood, but it's Huskus who sends Sydney into attack down towards their half-forward line. Francis is written into the ground again. And the ball spills free over the line. Throw in on the outer side. Goals to Richardson and Rocker for those who have just joined us. Maxfield. Round his body again. And Craig O'Brien takes them up. He's inside 50, O'Brien. Thinks about Lockett, still thinks about him. And gets him deep in the pocket. Well, that was uh, a, an absolutely brilliant lead from Lockett there. He ran straight towards uh, up the middle of the ground, basically trying to suck the Collingwood defenders away from the clear space, which he did. He didn't, then did a Yui, 
and he ended up taking the ball whilst it's on the boundary line he ended up with a straight shot at goal he's kicked five goals five for the season and much was said about Tony Lockett's kicking his approach to goal the fact that he only takes generally two or three steps before he kicks but this time he appears to have gone back the proverbial country kilometre Sixteen steps, and he's gone. So now Sydney are away, and Tony Lockett gets his first for the day. Well, I think credit also there to Stuart Maxfield. His kick to Craig O'Brien was outstanding. There's the one for Lockett, just ducking back into that open space. And let's have a look here. He doesn't actually get into a big run. He's still only trots about two or three steps but he did look to get himself completely balanced before he kicked great start to him yeah good reply from the swans back in the middle bounce favors Munkhurst tries to backhander it he's back in the action again and he's caught and there'll be another ball up so players trying to untangle themselves here and a free kick will go That's to Munkhurst pretty quick yeah I, I think pretty in some ways it's probably not bad umpiring I mean there's no need to touch the player the whistle was called up Buckley high Flyers wanted big punch from the Swans to McGuan taps it out wide again tapped from Francis here's Patterson under besieged by four Swans and has got hit high and will take the free kick just outside 50 but the I'm sure Rodney to be pleased not that he's lost possession but there was four Sydney Swans players attacking the man with the football which is a good sign early kicks in Monkhurst Walker chips in and takes it so really a set up play there going back to the centre of the ground and there really were a lot of Collingwood players there yeah, smart kick to space here and Lee Walker an important player for Collingwood because he gives them that third tall option in the forward line so Walker kicks and has kicked Collingwood's third goal so a lovely kick from Walker there and the Magpies reply to that Lockett goal in quick fashion. And an important inclusion, Lee Walker. Particularly when you consider the Swans are missing Bays and, of course, Ruse. They really have had to uh, stretch their depth to cover uh, all the tall players for Collingwood. They've currently got Troy Luff at centre-half back on Mark Richardson. Not a good bounce for Monkhurst. But he'll be in the thick of things once again. Overrun by Seymour. Collingwood a chance to push it down towards half forward, but Luff is there. Tries to get it out. Uh, there's been a whistle and he's lost it. Williams will take it. And 50 metres. Well, I didn't actually pick up the reason why the 50. Well, that wasn't back on the floor, I think, Jerry. Well, it's going to result in a gimme goal to Paul Williams. Second in the Copeland last year, had a wonderful season. And should post Collingwood's fourth goal in an excellent start here at the SCG. 20 metres out. He has done exactly that. Well, a horror start here once again for Sydney, and they really want to put the brakes on this. Because we saw last week that Collingwood has got so many options through the middle of the ground that they are capable of kicking 10 goal quarters. And let's have another look. That was almost a throw and that was the penalty there. And perhaps that was what the 50 was for. And it was fairly tough at the best. Chapman out of the centre on his left foot to Lockman to Kelly. Lockett one out with Kelly here. Kelly works to the front, does very well indeed. Then keeps Lockett away from the ball for the crummer. France is brilliant on the ground to Wright. Wright kicks it out wide. Williams comes from behind, pushed underneath it by Seymour. The big fella Stafford works his way through some traffic. Well done, son. Now goes to Lockett by himself. So Tony Lockett on the end of some tremendous work there from Greg Stafford. Well, it's just an outstanding individual performance. The Swans have known that this fellow has a lot of ability for some years, but like many tall fellows, he has taken just enough time to get into the uh, flow of things, but perhaps this will be the year he stamps his 
mark on the game. Yes, Mike Sheen did a piece on uh, Tony Lockett's kicking uh, during the weekend. As I said, I think it uh, is technically probably the best kick I've ever seen for goal. But he has gone back a bit further this time, though. And there's his second easy as you like. Champions react that way. Well, pretty straight kicking from both sides at the present time. Tony Lockett, the Swans' only goal kicker. It was pretty good uh, battle there already with Kelly. Kelly doing well in a one-on-one -on -one situation earlier. But this was just uh, a tremendous passage of play from a young ruckman who knows he's got to get possessions around the goal, around the ground, I should say. And Tony Lockett following up with another dead-eye shot for the big ones. Back in the middle once again, it's Monkhorst and Stafford flicked over the back and it's going to be okay towards Williams, but this time he overruns it. Sydney try and lock it up with Dyson at the bottom of the pack. Still they surge it forward. Patterson applies the tackle. Shannon Grant comes away, but it's well smothered by Scotty Crow, and there'll be a throw in. On centre wing. Stafford doing the work from behind. Dale Lewis shows him the football and gets the left foot. Torpedo up towards half forward. No one at home and Troyville well takes the timely mark. From half back. He swings play to the outer side. Now kick it. May have a little too much in the tank for Kelly. We'll have to wait and see. He's very skilled. Kelly's got him. He got him all right. He had to beat a couple. Maxfield was had that spent before he got it, but he recovers well. Stewie Maxfield's kick in towards full forward, in towards Lockett. He needs assistance. He's got assistance here. Picked up by Dyson. One behind. By the former Demon. And the first blemish from either side for the day. 2-1 plays four straight. Nathan Buckley, superb deliverer of the football comes back into play and just goes to Scotty Russell in the pocket certainly been one of Collingwood's form players so far this year opened up with a 30 possession game uh, uh, this boy may have a day out today Malcolm yes it's a great grab isn't it and trying to find the lead again can't get hold of it was so O'Brien bursting through Kelly he's just fantastic at that Lewis just trying to get a handle on it to Monkhurst and really a bad turnover here Patterson goes long Sitting in the way of the Swans, and a very good mark indeed. Taken by Scotty Doreen. Has players out wide. Stafford to Lewis. Oh. Now the door shut. Stafford really hadn't moved and was used. And so now he's forced to go out wide. And a great little contest out there in the boundary line. Kelly and Francis, two little goers. And a free kick's ended up with Tony Francis for a push. On the outer side, Sydney fans don't like it, but Francis has the football. To send Collingwood into their attacking zone. They lead at the moment, and it's a handy lead too. Big pack of players, no mark is going to be paid. Williams threw off the ground towards the boundary line, and it's straight to Dale Lewis. He wastes no time this time. Lewis kicks towards the right half forward, and a defensive fist by Gavin Francisco. Left Craig O'Brien. A little worse for wear on that outer side. May just well have come down on top of O'Brien's head. Classic sandwich between the body and the ground. And what we'll keep an eye on him. Kelly has to contend with Monkhurst. Buckley gets caught. The ball spills free over the line once more. And uh, he'll be off for the blood rule anyway, but he's uh, possibly at this stage not too sure which ground he's actually at. Yeah, so boundary throwing. Lewis quickly onto his boot. And surely Krasisko will take this. Unfortunately, Craig O'Brien's had a bit of trouble on the side with the trainers there. Really has knocked the stuffing out of him. So Krasisko kicks. Monkhurst can't quite get hold of it. The Swans work it out through Shannon Grant. Has got good skills to Gray. Picks it up. Now has to use kick it under pressure kick it. Oh, weaves his way through. Then chips. Too big for Lockett. But over the back is Chapman. And he accepts the mark gleefully on his chest. So, young Wade Chapman will kick from about 35 metres. And kick it was just clever there, the way he held the ball. Sure, he was probably going for Lockett. But 
if you're in front and Craig O'Brien just now will have to wait for this stretcher and rightly so it, yes it uh, he just seemed to lose balance didn't he as Krasiska came over and uh, as you said Jared it, it, the head might have hit the ground well, whilst we see uh, Craig O'Brien coming off the ground he looks as if he perhaps just slightly concussed I think it's been interesting Rodney Eads uh, usage of Shannon Grant a player who as a junior would always have been uh, forward of the center and very creative around goals and yet uh, Rocket Eade who was probably talking now there to Peter Philandia about to replace O'Brien has used Shannon Grant in a very creative way but across the half back line at present he's picking up uh, Stephen Patterson who was a three goal forward for Collingwood last week so I'll just have to be careful that he, whilst he has got to be creative, he's also got to be mindful that uh, he keeps Patterson away from scoring the big ones. Yes, Craig O'Brien's stretched it off. So now he'll have a 20-minute wait before he can come back on, and I'd suggest he'd probably enjoy that. That's the new ruling, Jerry. Yep. And, uh, I mean, it is funny, isn't it? I mean, coaches probably have used that as a ploy in the past, and there's no doubt that's happened, but... Um, when you see it, for instances like this, with medical decisions being made on players, it's just—I think it's a great rule. The fact that uh, give them plenty of time to relax and recover. And then a change for Collingwood while this is happening. Scott Crow is replaced by Scott Burns. By well, Scott. So Craig O'Brien getting a bit of a hand as he goes off, and really did set up that first goal for Tony Lockett with a great chip pass. Uh, which was the first one's goal. Down, down, down. You just be careful going down the stairs. Right, Matty, you got there. Just being advised, uh, there's quite a steep slope going down that race, and uh, as you can see, and no mishaps down there with the stretcher. So Chapman, seems like a long time ago, took a chest mark from 35 metres kicks. Oh, that's a lovely kick. Yeah, Swans, third goal for them. So Wade Chapman gets his first and joins Tony Lockett as the goal kicker for the Swans. And we see here once again the brilliance of uh, Derek Kickett. Just to be able to weave your way through heavy traffic like that is, is a skill in itself. He's got magical hands, he can wave the ball sideways to deflect players. But a smart piece of play by Wade Chapman, a crucial conversion that one. So Sydney fired up after that, the Chapman goal go forward again through Dyson, down towards the half forward line, pressure on the defence as Kickett belts it clear, down towards the pocket, oh, Lachlan's giving chase but he's starting from behind, he needs assistance and he gets it, all too late in the form of Brad Seymour who takes it over the line. Just on the 50 for Sydney, who are down by just five points. In an excellent first quarter. Schäuble doing the ruck work. Kelly overruns it. Wright gets a short kick. Up towards centre wing. And again, it's uh, taken over. Right, Brad Seymour right on his hammer is Tony Francis. Stafford and Monkhorst. Monkhorst wins it beautifully down to Buckley. Oh, but his hand pass is well smothered by Dyson. Brown at the bottom of the pack, tries to get it out. He did so. It will now have a bounce. On centre wing, Brian Sheehan again puts it in motion. Maxfield, a hurried kick towards the 50. Scotty Russell needs a kind bounce. He also needs a little bit of space. It ricochets at the shoulder of Tony Francis, the former Red Leg in South Australia, and another throw. In. Maxfield, of course, running with Nathan Buckley. We've got uh, Tony Francis running with Paul Kelly. We saw him do the similar role last week against Melbourne, where Francis has turned it, turned it round as uh, the tagger. And he was uh, an outstanding player for them last week. Monkhorst takes the free kick. Walker couldn't take the mark. He has assistance in the form of Burns. Came off the bench and tumbles it up towards Richardson. Stafford there also. Over the line. This time Collingwood though in attack. 
Yes, and uh, seven goals so far in this first quarter. Been a lively start. Tap back. Richardson with a quick kick is smothered. Barnes overrun the footy. Back up from Richardson comes to Brown. Wants Rocker on a lead. He ducks back and Dunkley reads it better. So well done from Andrew Dunkley. Whoops the ball out wide to Luff. Has Grant and a plenty of space in front of him. Running at him is Burns. Tries to give it to kick it. Has to wait for the poor handball. Brilliantly done. Worked out to Creswell. Back into the centre. Schwarbel can't grab hold of it. Gray spins off brilliantly to Chapman. 35 metres out and closing. And can't quite hit the nail on the head. And it falls down to Monkhurst. And Monkey's got a bit of time to come to the outer side and find his skipper in Gavin Brown. Into half back. Kelly's there, thought about going on to Francis. But instead it's the 150 game of Mick Maguire. Hasn't got those legs really pumping yet. That's the bottom dollar that he will have as the day goes on. Maxfield's got a chance to goal here. Instead he goes for the pass to Tony Lockett and Mockhurst may tidy up. Gets it across to Shaw, but he rides a one bump over the top to McGuan. Goes back towards it, Mockhurst on the last line of defence. He's in trouble. Now he sweeps it wide towards Scotty Russell and rustles away. In towards the centre, Collingwood is starting to run. Buckley long and low and beautiful to Samaria Rocker. Outstanding kick that one from Nathan Buckley. Just allowed Sav Rocker to run into some space. And we focused on this a hell of a lot last week. Didn't actually try to spear the ball in. He sat it up just a little bit. It still had the difference. It still had the distance. And quite apart there, the difference between Maxfield's kick to Rocker and that to Lockett and that one to Rocker. So Severio Rocker from 50 metres has pushed that to the right. One behind goes on the board. The Pies lead by one straight kick with just over six minutes remaining in this first quarter at the SCG. A very good crowd now in attendance. Sydney looking to get out of trouble through Scotty Doreen. Here's breaks away. Oh, chips it just over Buckley's head to Maxfield. It was a poor kick before, and there's another one. It's found Gray, but it wobbled. Great take from Gray. He chips it out in front of Lockett, and the big fellow doesn't let him down. And it's quite apparent on both sides. Very keen to go straight up the middle of the ground. That was exceptional play by the Swans. Getting the ball from the kick in. It was a yeah. great take from Gray, wasn't it, with that wobbly kick from Maxfield? But, uh, yeah, that kick of Maxfield before, that just that little chip, it just missed, didn't it? So Lockett with two goals, and Wade Chapman with one for the Swans. The form Lockett's been in this quarter, you would uh, suggest he's pretty much a certainty for this. <laughs> Maybe that's going a bit far. Yeah. He's been a marvellous kick, almost 70% accuracy rate for the entire length of his career so far it's amazing kicks he's hooked that one mate. and only a point will result well greg norman did miss one this morning too sandy well he's kicked two one which is 66.666 repeating so it's close to 70. russell back into play to graham wright Came second in the Brownlow back in 1990. Did uh, Graham Wright finds Tony Francis? Francis from the back pocket region towards centre wing and Richardson didn't try to mark. Just tried to flick it over the back. But the only one where it was there that was uh, Brad Seymour. Look out, Dyson in trouble. Brian Sheehan sees it over the line. Says throw it. In. It's one of the tragedies of football, isn't it? Handing to a bloke, handballing to a bloke, flat-footed. Scotty Russell in picture, originally from Sturt. They'll be happy there today, Malcolm. They won a game. <laughs> yes, finally. Phil Carmen will be very happy. He certainly will. And good on them. Another Collingwood free kick, this time in the back, going the way of uh, Gavin Brown. Yeah, not so good for West Adelaide and Michael Taylor. No, his uh, coaching career after uh, a few weeks, still yet to produce the win. Walker in front, a little too far underneath the football. But he manages to get it out towards Buckley. There's a hand pass to Francis. Almost caught the hand, but he's been pinged. He won't be pleased with that. Well, they would be happy because they've been on the end of a couple of severe ones. But Francis appeared to cop one across the chops in that tackle. But they do tend to even up. 
He goes Luff towards Kickett in the middle. And Derek Kickett wants to play on. He'll look down to the forward line. Down towards Luckett. Snuck away from Craig Kelly. And this is the way that the Swans have to play this ground and also this champion play. Get the ball down quickly. Leave him in a one-on-one -on -one situation and very few players will stop him. Directly in front. This time not a long approach. Doesn't matter, he's split him. Straight through the middle. Three goals to Tony Lockett. In fact, 3-1. And we've got a game in our hands, despite the fact that early in the piece it looked like the Pies were going to uh, really kick on and get a big lead in this quarter. The Swans, to their great credit, have kicked back. And it's no surprising that Derek Kickett has been one of the architects of this. He has been down a bit the first two games. So from the centre bounce, players trying to sort this out. Orchard, a great handball out wide to Watson. Watson chips it to Patterson, and Patterson marks 65 metres. Wheels around now, and looks at the rocker direction. Three on one, and right. Rocker's got it! Unbelievably, Severio Rocker, among a nest of swans, is that, if that's what you say, Jared, has plucked that one out of the air. Fantastic. Is that a nest of gaggle? They're geese, aren't they? There's a lot of them. There's plenty of them, and what a great mark by the big Sav. <laughs> so, almost goal for goal. So the full forwards, really in the action here in this first quarter. Severo Rocket, a lot of steps, walking, balance. Now gets a bit of motion, kicks and kicks beautifully. Second goal. Well, that happened in before, Jared. Uh, Lee Walker went for that mark a few minutes ago, and I saw him grab his knee just after. And for a guy that's had what three operations, that's a bit of a tragedy, isn't it? Well, we'll just have to wait. And I guess see the re the outcome of uh, the medical assessment at this early stage. It didn't look good, but that did. That was a great grab from a player that just gets better every time you see him play. Could be in for a big afternoon here at the SCG. Lockett has three, Rocker has two for Sydney. In a great first quarter, it's Kelly who rips it out of the middle, but it's taken away for Collingwood by Burns. A high kick towards Harford. Here comes Rocker again, steamrolling the pack. But it's a Sydney free kick. In fact, the advantage has been paid. Huskis is away, up towards left half forward. And the mark has been taken by Troy Gray. Coming into this side. With no Paul Ruse this afternoon. Out with an ankle injury. Gray's pass is OK. Just going short to the 50 metre line. And Darren Creswell now has Lockett on a lead into the pocket. And well sport by Watson. A throw in. Left forward pocket. Sydney in attack. Schäuble with a fist towards Burns, but Dyson gets in front of him. Oh. Yes. If there is such a thing as the perfect tackle, that was very close because he pinned his one of his arms and he had no way of getting rid of the ball legitimately. So Russell heads to the outer side. He's got Craig Kelly. He just popped down away from Lockett for the moment. He went looking for Stephen Patterson. Needed assistance and got it. Orchard got in front, unable to complete the mark, socked off the ground and wildly into the stands. Troy Luff to bring it back into play. Yes, looking at options. Now goes the chip into a lock. Doesn't quite get him, it gets an awkward bounce. Magpie's there in number. Richardson to Monkhurst, over to Buckley. Oh, surely this will be it. Put it down. Left foot forced him wide and unfortunately straight they really didn't work that out between the two of them Nathan Buckley talking to Alex McDonald there and I think he wanted a shepherd or a fade off and perhaps just the indecision caused him to miss Doreen on the outer side Sydney clear with a long kick up towards centre wing Dyson's at the back of the pack and he's away another long one in towards goal over the top it sails and it bounces 
Rogers! Touched on the line. She. Dale Lewis now running with Mick McGuan. We see here the, his extra speed that he's found in the last season or so. Just saved the Magpies a goal. Oh, I just about asked for the developed print there, boys. By oh, the proverbial finger. Oh. Anyway, McGuan brings it back into play. He finds Watson at halfback. And the way he goes. Off to Francis. He gets around, kick it, swings it wide to Shawville. He's got a bit of time. Has a look up towards a Richardson. Making space on the flank. Shorty goes towards Patterson. They've still got it in the pocket. And he's run out of time because the siren has sounded. A very even first quarter here at the SCG. Tony Lockett has come back hard with three of Sydney's four goals. Severio Rocker has booted two for Collingwood. Paul Williams has one. Lee Walker has one. And Mark Richardson also has one. But not a lot in this game at the moment. An excellent first quarter in warm conditions. Expecting a top of around 23 and we're just about at that. And a good crowd in attendance too. There's Lee Walker. Let's hope that uh, he doesn't have to face yet another operation with these uh, tragic problems that he's had trying desperately to come back and did so so well last week and uh, well we'll just have to wait and see what happens there it's quarter time here at the SCG and Collingwood lead in a tight one the visitors in their 2000th game in the competition of 5-1-31 Sydney a 4-3-27 so here we go, second term, four points the difference, favouring the visitors. Monkhorst, another big run, but he's beaten by Stafford this time. Can't take it out of the middle, neither can Brown, or Gray, or Creswell. And eventually, the umpire comes in and decides that he will have it after Brad Seymour applied the solid tackle. Close to the centre circle here in Sydney. Short kick gathers little distance. It's flicked wide. Gray could have almost been held then. Shoyville tried to tuck it up. He couldn't do so. Here's an opportunity for O'Loughlin to go wide. He wanted Gray, but he just went a little too far. Now Brown, hoping to tidy up, gets it away. Towards his teammate in Burns, who kicks back towards centre wing. Russell chips off the ground. Not very far, mind you. Orchard comes in over the top, asks the question. And the umpire... It was uh, Peter Carey said get on with the job and so he does. Shannon Grant he's got a birthday next week. He's not thinking about it at the moment as he kicks up towards half forward but Gavin Krasiska is there to take a timely mark. Combines with Buckley and Krasiska this time goes short to Tony Francis almost down to the middle back he goes to Buckley again he sweeps them down towards the 50 metre line. He was looking for Richardson. He doesn't find him. It's Huskus who intercepts. Finds Shannon Grant. Grant goes toward the outer side. Here's uh, the latest father, Troy Luff. Short. And it's marked by Stafford. Stafford now run himself into a bit of trouble there. He has to go back to Luff, who just then kicks it under pressure. And Gavin Krasiska takes a terrific diving mark. Centre wing and holds up the Swans once again. Early going in this second quarter, now a young veteran, 164 games, and a great servant for Collingwood. Heck of players. Ooh. Oh, Kelly! And plays on, hits the ground running, and unloads it. Shawball with the sit from behind, they can't get at it. Buckley's given away the free kick, or received the free kick for a high tackle. And now has a player wide, and that's Francis. Well, they should be able to set something up here, Collingwood. But one wants it. Kelly comes to meet him, he now chips it, and Watson takes a great diving mark again. So the Kelly mark, sensational. It is a great feature of our game, isn't it? Herbert Vincent punching. Coaches, here we go, Graham Wright, 65 metres out. Pack of players, Swans players have really filled in that area. Anthony Rocker comes on the ground for the first run today. Now goes wide to the pocket, beautiful kick to Richardson. Really did lose his marker, and young Michael O'Loughlin has just been rested for the moment. So a bit more height now in that forward line. We'll get another look at this uh, mark in a minute. 
So Mark Richardson, kick from 45 metres. Very deliberate approach. Just pulled it a bit, and only a point will result. So the first score of the quarter goes to Collingwood, and they increase their margin by that solitary behind. There's five points as Lewis takes the mark and fullback, and then he goes long this time up towards Sydney. The big fly was Brad Seymour from behind, couldn't take the mark. So a bounce will take place on centre wing. I just had a thought. If, if we played Australian rules here from the outset rather than perhaps the other code, you'd think with the weather conditions here, it'd be like the Perth conditions, wouldn't it, in a lot of ways? And spectacular skills would develop. So from centre wing, Colin would have a chance to run it towards Watson. He chips towards Rock. It's a little too hard. And coming over the top with an effective spoil is Dunkley over the line. In fact, the weather in Perth uh, was one of our conversations this morning. Often we are told that people in Sydney don't uh, follow football because of the weather. But in Perth, it's pretty similar. Yeah, it's got to do with culture and upbringing, hasn't it? Francis' kick was taken over the line after a behind was conceded by uh, Scotty Doreen. And he brings it back into play. We've got a couple of options that outer side used to Creswell who finds Shannon Grant. The youngsters away on centre wing. Centering kick. It was well picked up by Rocker actually on the half volley to give it to Dyson. Now this looks uh, opportunistic here. Straight in towards goal and there's no mistaking it for Wade Chapman kicking yet another. Got one in the first term. So Chapman's booted two and scores are level. And a great fight back by Sydney and what they're doing better today than they have at any stage this season is taking the ball out from kick-ins. Scott Doreen's delivery there and finding loose men around the 50 metre line not around the 10 or 15 mark has been quite good and he's a very good shot at goal is Wade Chapman. So Stafford and Monkhurst again at it. Tied ball game. Williams to centre half forward. Luff with a big jump. They've all got Spring Hills today to Patterson. Wants to take the players on. Now is forced to kick. Brown from behind can't manage it. Orchard almost. Swans under enormous pressure. Go to the boundary line. There, Russell. Sells the dummy once. Now goes for goal. Oh, that is a miraculous goal. Fantastic play from Scott Russell. First goal to Scotty Russell. And a goal feast continues at the SCG. Just a delight to see a player with so many skills in very good form. Russell has been in the Pies' best players every game this season. Perhaps hasn't been as dominant today as uh, particularly the first two weeks. But he's obviously in great touch with that piece of play. And an infringement by Sydney is going to see Monkhorst with the football. He gives it across to Buckley. They may muck this up if they're not careful. It's on the outer side with Burns. He's under great pressure. Brown goes into assist, but they will lose it. Poor play. But the advantage now with Sydney as it goes down towards Maxwell on half forward. He leaves it for Philandia. Philandia chips towards Lockett. Oh. Oh. out of position but incredibly as only a champion can we have got to feel sorry or shame for Craig Kelly there because <laughs> he did everything right look at that only to be beaten by a genius so Tony Lockett for number four and this again to level the scores here at Sydney that's a disappointing kick it's away to the left Three goals, two. Sydney a 5-4. Collingwood 6-3. Here's Nathan Buckley. It was just, just such a letdown after that oh. great mark, wasn't it? Plays it to himself. Now has to come back inside. And finds a player out loose, and that's Burns. Burns has players inside. Great kick to Patterson. Terrific foot passing from the Collingwood team. 
Russell runs on and he finds that player too so the, the Swans haven't touched it and Scotty Russell really not much on now we'll probably have to kick this long taking a lot of time oh decides to run around him well that's the best second best option I suppose and kicks it to Lewis so it breaks down Lewis gives it off to the running players through to Dyson there's a lot of players running for him it then goes long and Kelly in best spot so the kick really didn't find its mark he gives it off towards Buckley chips towards the outer wing area and McDonald takes it. Well, he goes low and relatively short. Kelly picks it up, but they're not out of the woods yet. Francis, Shawville, Wright. Graham Wright is on half back. Gets around a couple eventually, then passes towards Patterson. He does well, but his kick is not good. So the kicking just in the past couple of minutes, in fact, from both sides. There's been a little bit of a letdown. Oh, Lockett went up too early. Torval takes the mark. <laughs> he too got up and up and got his mouth open. He'll catch flies in a minute. He's loving it. Monkhorst. Towards Watson. And he marks on centre wing. So he's not to get a kick out there at the moment. It's quite loose, isn't it? Yep. Russell. Spearing it into the pocket. Because that's where Severio Rocca was lurking. And he'll charge in towards goal from 50 metres. No one home. He had a shot, but he's away to the right, and it's gone out of bounds on the foot. Yes, it's really opened up the game. Uh, I suppose with the five to six, it has been a few easy goals scored, but sensational high marking and attempted high marking. But not as quite as tight as the one we saw last night, Sandy, with uh, Brisbane and Richmond. It was on. You go to one. Not all those easy kicks. Falls over the back to Dyson, sets up Lewis, kicks back towards centre half forward. Pretty direct play this. Rocket from behind to kick it. Wheeze oh. himself through. You'd think would have found Lockett, but actually kicked from where Lockett had came, and Kelly takes the easy mark. Yeah, Off to no Burns. Oh, has McDonald out by himself. There's a lot of space now to work in. Francisco runs with him, does not used, and the kick is a bit disappointing. And Kelly back into the middle of the ground and Luff can break away. Troy Luff from halfback will come across the ground to another blonde bomber in Huskis. Hand pass is not good, but uh, they've still got possession. That was well done by Shannon Grant. Off to Stewie Maxfield. What's his delivery like to Tony Luff? That's better. Well, Luff was a little frustrated at the last delivery, and well, he may be. No so problems there, Jerry. So he should be because the last couple of deliveries were pretty yeah. poor. You see there, Craig Kelly, uh, five metres away. It wasn't because of bad play, but he had to decide one way or another which way Lockett was going to go. He tried to second-guess Maxfield. He picked the wrong option, and Lockett just cruised into an easy one. So they both kicked 10 the full full tip. <laughs> Sat loose across the midfield. They really can. It's almost impossible to stop. But what is also happening is that it's clear that both sides are determined just to get it from half back and go yeah. straight to their forward. 3-2 yeah. he's got at the moment. Very deliberate approach this time. Now he's got 4-2. Oh, well, if you were playing centre-half forward at the SCG today, you'd have a pretty stiff neck, I'd reckon, because the ball has been going over the top, and it is very much a characteristic of this ground. Centre-half forwards are almost an anachronism here. You can almost get by with just a running play because so many times the ball is kicked from the centre and even off half-back to a leading full forward. But an outstanding game at the moment. So point the margin. Swans one point in front. Monkhurst does some good work again in the middle of the ground. Coming through as O'Loughlin, tapping it forward. Oh, it does it well. Now sets up Maxwell and goes for goal from 45 metres out. And unfortunately, his kick is letting down and the Swans. Here we go, Graham Wright. Kicks 
Really does go towards the middle, sets up Munkers and a nice mark from Damien Munkers right on the square line. Francis has to come now, spins back onto his left foot, goes out wide in the Watson direction. Can't grab hold of it. Lachlan heading towards the boundary line. Yes. Safe to see that over. And up right ball's all clear. So there'll be a boundary throw in centre wing. Under 10 minutes remaining in this first half. Sydney just with their noses in front. Uh, is that pedantic or not, Derek? Oh, I was waiting for it. We haven't had one yet, so there's a first. Okay. Monkhorst has it. Drifts it in towards the 50. His target was Richardson. Dale Lewis is the opposition's number three. And now Brian Sheehan's found a free kick, but said pay the advantage. Kicks down towards Stafford. Big man gets it away nicely to Maxfield. Maxfield has a look down towards the forward line. Lock will come over the top of Kelly. Kelly playing in front. Spoons it out the back door towards Krasiska. He's got Graham right there and uses him. And right steadies coming towards Watson on half back. Lockwood in hot pursuit, but he's able to get it across to Schäuble off to Buckley. Steadies in towards Richardson. Cock one high. He did catch him across the head. It was a pretty good uh, defensive punch. He just did uh, cop Richardson high, and that's against the rules. Tony Francis now is only 15 metres closer to goal. Looks down towards Rocker, who got a hand to it. Lewis got a boot to the ball. Kelly. Well, he's sensational to watch Paul Kelly. Almost had his head taken off twice would have been a major problem for him. Lewis, onto the left foot. It's a high kick back towards the centre wing. Oh, Chapman! Well, they're all having a shot today. When in doubt, fly. Lockett's the target. He's got away from Kelly, and he's going to be the first to oh, the But he's got the point. Forty-five out and a forty-five degree end. Four goals, two to his name to date. Let's have another look at it, Jared. Well, there's no doubt a, kick, a free kick here, but I, the question most of the Swan supporters are asking is why didn't we pay the advantage here? Perhaps it, there was a bit too much time between the free kick and uh, I think it was Brad Seymour picking up the football. It is like uh, kick to kick in the old high school days, isn't it? <laughs> Everybody going for mark of the year, <laughs> all having a dip. I'll tell you what, this crowd here is certainly getting their money's worth, which is great to see. At the moment, there's only a point in it. Lockett has the chance to make it seven points. While the old defender Craig Kelly on the line. They've had some duels over the years. Look at Lock, dead eyed dick. Small thank you as we check the scoreboard from Tony Lockett. 7 4 plays 6 3. Well, last year, most of the media attention was about whether Craig Kelly would apply the pinchy pinchy tactics on the big fellow himself. And despite the fact that he's already kicked five, I would suggest that Craig would err on the side of caution in that regard. It's a great battle and a very good game of attacking football. So the Swans by nine points. Time for Collingwood to react now. Rocker, terrific handball. Lock it again in front. Can't get hold of it. White mops up and sets up Francisca to Russell. Has Buckley running for him, but chipping in is Dale Lewis. And this could be a really costly turnover. Kicks back into a four onto one. And Shawble does very well to tie up the footy. The margin seven points. Collywood now using a running centre half forward. Mark Richardson into the ruck. Oh, falls to Maxfield. Here's his contest again. Lock spot. Ball bounces back. Falls. <laughs> Great work in the goal square. I mean, it's about time we actually stopped the goal. So that's some desperation in front of the goal square. And pretty well done from most players then. 
the youngster. On for his first run, it's Matthew Nix. Tapped out wide, and Kelly runs across the top of the player. Is this I think it is underneath there, yes. And out of bounds. Collingwood now with Paul Williams and Alex McDonald across the half forward line. Damien Monkhorst in the goal square. Big punch from Richardson. Falls to Maxfield. Gives it to kick it. Has to kick it really hurriedly. Somehow or other manages to keep it inside the field of play. And a contest there sees it over the line. So that fast free flowing just slowed down for the moment. As a, a contest happened in the goal square just to hold up the game for a bit. Richardson uses his body and accepts the free kick. Now called to play on. Just kicks it and unloads it long. Which is what they've been doing from one end of the ground to the other. Huskus was he held? Yes. He'll play on, Adam Huskus. Come to the outer side. Troy Loft now with a bit of space on centre wing. One bounce and he's told to keep going. 70 metres out from goal. He wants Tony Lockett. Lockett edges out Kelly, but they come in from the side to spoil. Russell's taken out of it by Lockett. Illegally. Troy Luff now, the Sydney Swans ruckman, because Greg Stafford's gone down to full back to pick up Monkhurst playing full forward in the goal square alongside Sav. Russell goes short to Kelly with Lockett on the mark. Kelly's got a little bit of room. Drifted in towards the middle and the mark taken by Alex McDonald. Away goes Graham Wright with Kickett giving chase, but Wright gets his kick up towards a rocker and a pack of players. McGuan is also there. Hasn't had a huge effect on the game today. Stephen Patterson to Buckley from 48 metres doesn't bend it round and another wild spray goes out of bounds on the floor he's had a couple of those today Luff to Doreen off to O'Loughlin and they've got it up to us oh, oh, wing oh let's have a go says Matthew Nix welcome from West Adelaide what a fly by the youngster in his first game, and good luck to him too. As Schäubel hugs the boundary line. Oh dear. Let's have a look at this one, Jared. Well, he's just getting part of the action and showing that uh, what Paul Kelly can do, I can do just a shade better. Yes, there's been some spectacular highlights. And the footy hasn't been bad either. Schäubel around the ground and along the ground and out of bounds again. Has been it has been fairly open though, hasn't it? Uh, you just wonder about this with the way Collingwood are playing. Um, you know, Tony Shaw has said that, hasn't he, about that being a lot more offensive? Well, he, he did credit Tom Hafey with a lot of influence on his coaching and career. And uh, Tom Hafey, of course, always believed that uh, if you kick more goals on the scoreboard, you won. Yes, at uh, various times, I suppose, we've criticised that sort of play, or, or some people have. Kick, Kelly kicked, kicks it out. To Buckley's really getting some touches at the back end. Does this a lot, just cops and stops, trying to set the ball up. Kicks back into a middle, and really the kick didn't go find its mark. Shannon Grant under pressure. He's free kicked, and Gavin Brown, the culprit, and will take this. Kick it out wide. I feel he can not get a kick out there at the moment. It really is loose, isn't it? Kick it, trying to set up Lockett. He's got Lewis instead. That's a lovely kick. I'm sure Lewis was waiting for Lockett to lead then, and uh, Lockett was just walking casually back to the goal square. I don't think there's any doubt one of the messages that came out of last week's game against the Dockers was that we're not using Tony Lockett well enough. And uh, the Sydney Swans have, at many occasions today, looked for Lockett. So, Dale Lewis from 40 metres kicks. The crowd's happy. He's kicked their eight. This first and the Swans increase their lead. Well, they'll go into half time for the first time this season knowing that they're uh, playing good football. The Swans have been pretty ordinary to date. But they've really attacked the football. They seem to be Supporting each other, it is an open game of football, and that'll suit Tony Lockett because he won't let them down in the goal kicking stance. So, Sydney have their biggest lead in the game to date. 
13 points as we have another bounce virtually in the middle. I think the role that Dale Lewis is doing on Mick McGuan is uh, pretty significant at the moment. Luff doing the ruck work. McGuan gets a hurried left foot kick down towards half forward. They need the next one, but uh, at the moment, Sydney are playing with great determination and vigour. Doreen kicks towards half forward. Chapman again was the flyer. We know he can fly. Graham Wright picks it up, wobbles it back towards the centre. No mark taken. That was McDonald. Williams tries to get through. Needs to give it away towards Richardson. He does so. Back again to James. Down towards the 50. And a rocker. The Magpies uh, linking up nicely there in the middle of the ground. To get this to uh, Sav. James getting a kick. They have been down a couple of their major players in the midfield. Uh, just been missing this quarter. Allowing the Swans to get back on top. Kicking from 53 metres. Flat looking punt kick. And the one behind. Uh, it slams into the woodwork. So, Rocker, 2-2. Two -two. And the Sydney chant goes up here at the SCG. Yes, last few minutes of this uh, first half. Once again, that low trajectory kick to Lewis. We really have a lot of players running to that position, the Swans. Now under a bit of pressure, the ball won't sit. Kelly comes in off the ground. Off the leg of a player. Crow off the ground again. Goes to Russell. Breaks away beautifully. Now kicks. Monkhurst on Lachlan. Oh, Lachlan. You'd think he'd nearly get hold of it. Just can't. Lewis comes into support and pushes to the boundary line. So a bit of danger there for the Swans. But uh, Lewis able to back up his young teammate with Monkhurst not being able to control the ball in the air. He did need to square that one up, Dale Lewis, because he gave the ball away across half-back. So boundary throw in. Just over a minute to go of this second quarter. Punch back to the goal square. Not a Collingwood player there. So a rush behind to Collingwood. And that's again the scoring. Just subsided for a while here. As Collingwood get a rush point. Collingwood have added uh, just one goal for oh, the corner. There's a fine mark by Troy Love. To O'Loughlin. The youngster possibly could have gone on with the job. Now he's gone back. Intended to man up, but there are a couple of loose ones. There's one. Huskus and Stafford. Combined to go up towards half forward. Here's Tony Lockett at the back of the pack. He swings round. He snaps and he goes. That's the way you do it. Six goals to Tony Lockett. Three in the first term and three so far in the second. And this is an absolute Lockett special. Hughes getting the ball down long to him once again. And if you've got a fellow that's as good as this down there, surely that's the way to go. The Swans are doing it uh, pretty nicely at the moment. Collingwood has taken Damien Monkhorst off the ground. Watson's back on for Collingwood. But they really do need a lift in the middle of the ground where McGuan, Francis, Williams have been relatively quiet this quarter. So back in the centre, Richardson and Stafford. Line ball, falls to McGuan. And... Swan's playing players off the back of the square and Doreen really is getting some touches and setting it up. He says, let's go along again to Lockett. Why wouldn't you? He's got Kelly out of position. Kelly does pretty well in the end. Chapman, oh, oh to Kelly, is a free kick back. And Kelly will accept the free kick. So danger time again for Collingwood. And uh, I didn't actually see what that was for. It looked like a pretty good contest in the end. I thought that Lockett might have had him, but uh, Kelly did well. James to Buckley. Coming back hard was Maxfield. That's pretty good play. And forces it to the boundary line. So Siren goes for half time. Sydney 9-4. Collingwood trail 6-5. So a spike goal quarter then to the Swans. And as Sandy mentioned, only a goal to Collingwood, Jared. Yes, and they really did just fade away uh, the pies. And after seemingly uh, being in control about 15 minutes into this game. Sydney have really fought back as a unit 
and they are playing a very direct brand of football which is the only way to go at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Scott Russell has been uh, a reasonably good performer for Collingwood but it really has been all Sydney in that quarter and they finish the half going in knowing that they've got uh, Collingwood's measure but only if they continue to work uh, very hard in the middle of the ground. Yes, uh, Tony Lockett, six goals, two to date, and Wade Chapman has a couple. As we check the scoreboard here at the Sydney Cricket Ground, Sydney, the home side, a 9-4, 58, leading Collingwood, 6-5, 41. The ruck work. Sydney going, uh, continuing to go with Greg Stafford, and why wouldn't they with Kelly, Kickett, and Maxfield going also with Buckley. So Brian Sheehan holds the ball aloft, and away we go into the second half. A good bounce for Stafford. He can pluck it out of the air, but almost kicks it straight up in the air. A big pack of players as Buckley fists it down. Somehow kick it, but out of enormous trouble. It goes to Huskus. He pokes it wide. Sydney have the possession early on in this second half. Dyson gives it across to Philandia, then does the shepherding work. Lock it over the top. Stafford getting his first touch on the ball, then uh, poleaxing a couple of players when he followed it up. Sydney reflexly then handballed the ball backwards across the half back line to get some space. The pace of Kelly here told on kicking the first goal in the second half, and didn't it come so quickly? Gee, didn't he move quick? He's got some pace, hasn't he? You get how quick he is sometimes. Oh, the ball sits for Stafford again. Can't get rid of it. That's Probably should have been holding the ball. And a pack of players hold it in momentarily. It then falls out, but the umpire had call for another bounce. Skipper Gavin Brown, 26 there for Collingwood. And Peter Carey puts it down. Stafford again gets his hand on the ball. McDonald gives it up. Quick kick around the body. Goes forward. Well met by Krasiska. Really did charge his arm and deserve that. Ends up back with Creswell, who squeezes it out right, out wide to Dyson. Watson hot on his hammer, and he's content to let it run over the line. So is Watson. So the ball forced wide. Now, I was just having a thought at half time, Jared. Uh, you know, Kelly had six kicked on him. Not all his fault, but at some stage, do you let it go? Or it's one of those decisions you make, isn't it? Well, I think that uh, you have to let it go. He's the best equipped. And Colin overly tall at present. Haven't got that many options. No, they work it around the back through right. Stafford sits underneath it. And becoming a bit of a dominant player at the start of this third quarter. He chips out wide to Philandia. Peter Philandia started on the bench. He wanted to kick it. Good interception and he may lose it here. Although the hand pass is astray. Now an opportunity for Sydney again to go charging out of defence and up towards that attacking zone towards Dale Lewis. One, two grabs, couldn't take it. He's being held. The umpire somehow couldn't see it. Sydney fans furious at no decision. The play goes on up towards half court. And a strong mark in front taken by the skipper, Gavin Brown. Goes short to Scotty Russell. Russell will put them inside 50. McDonald lost sight of it. Doreen chips across towards the boundary line and with Patterson sees it over. Throw in in the right forward pocket for Collingwood. Severio Rock is down there. He's booted two goals, two. Monkhorst and Stafford. The Collingwood big man wins it down to Patterson. He pulls it too hard. Obviously, having Moncourse at full forward, you get the bonus of having a big ruckman to palm the ball wherever he likes from the boundary throw-ins. But on the other hand, he can't squeeze down the back line and help Craig Kelly out in one of their other major problems, and that's to block Tony Lockett. So Doreen comes out wide to O'Loughlin. That's the sit. Can't control it to Kelly. Gives it back to O'Loughlin. And the young fella starts taking off. Has players in front of him. Now Lockett leads out wide. The kick's not good. Won't get to that player. Troy Gray gets hold of it. That is holding the ball. Kelly does it well. 
And you must make some attempt by wriggling your body or doing something on the ground. And uh, Bray did neither. Wriggling. Harris the centenary was. The wheels on. <laughs> Kelly to Watson. Yeah, you must make some movement. Look as though you're trying to do something. What a players just actually just dwell over it. And the umpire has no alternative but to ping him. Watson hugs the boundary line. It is. So Collingwood making a hell of a lot of uh, errors at the present time. Sydney's pressure really counting. Ball falls back to Duray. He really is an architect. He really does use the ball pretty well. Not on this occasion. But he is a smart player. McGuan under pressure goes out wide. McDonald. And Alex McDonald sits easy. Has a player running forward in Graham Wright. That's a good stretch for the little fella. And he'll kick from some 45 metres out. And not in dangerous territory now with the scoreboard for Collingwood. But certainly a goal needed right here. Well, there were two options there. Monkhurst won out in the square. And Graham Wright who'd uh, run some... A hell of a long way to get down to supply that option from the back pocket. Good running. I think it's important to reward guys that run that far if they are an option. So Graham Wright kicks. Lovely low kick, penetrating kick. And he's hit the post. So a bit of a couple of let-offs there for the Swans. Patterson missing one with a snap with, with perhaps time to do it. And Graham Wright there, the set shot. 21 points, the margin. Andrew Dunkley. And Brian Sheen saying, back you come, Monty. 50. Well, let's have a look at this 50 metres. <laughs> well, I think uh, Dunkley made the most of it. Oh, yes. Towards Lockett. Spoils, sock it off the ground. By Philandia down towards the forward pocket zone. Watson is there defending again for Collingwood. He kicks it up towards half back. And Shannon Grant does well to get a hand to it against the experienced Francisco. He needs help and he gets it from Scotty Russell. Russell now goes inside towards Buckley. Shannon Grant still chases. Buckley gets his kick. Rock of the fly! Can't take the mark. Monkhorst gives it back to Big Sav and he pokes through the hole. It's exciting transference of play then. And the rocker almost felt was perhaps could have been the mark of the day. They just couldn't quite hang on to it. Uh, Doreen. Now looking at options. Goes very short. It's got a hand on it, Rocker. May fall their way, no, to Lewis. Dyson gets it to Maxfield, can't control it. Then comes back to Dyson. They work it out with handball. Worked pretty well on there. There's a lot of swans running. Right smother from Krasiska. Dyson for his third touch in 20 seconds. Back to Maxfield again. Plenty of swans players. Now forced to kick long. Lockett has to sit from behind. Pushes, shoves and marks. Well, I'm not sure whether it's the heat, but there is no doubt that Sydney are working far better in the middle of the ground. They should have turned the ball over twice then. But they had so many numbers in support that they just continued to work the ball forward. Should have been turned over with an interception from the kick-in. But there weren't enough Collingwood players right on the ball. And there was another option when there was a smother. But once again, Sydney with plenty of numbers got the ball and now they've got another certain goal coming up. Yeah, so Tony Lockett. Name written on that ball. All over. Comes in. Very deliberate. Oh, lucky seven for Tony. And one of the patrons of the Sydney Swans, Mike Willisey, would be liking what he sees at the present time because this lead now getting out to almost a match winning one. Certainly in this ground he can kick five goals in five minutes, but what the danger signs are is that their lack of the work ethic in the middle of the ground, Collingwood, when they do get it, they're giving it back to Sydney, whose pressure is outstanding. Again, the Sydney chant goes up as Stafford wins it out of the middle, but it's taken away by Buckley. A high kick, putting Collingwood inside 50. 
A wall of Sydney players are there at the bottom is Doreen. He bounces it back towards the centre. Good interception, sees Sydney through Chapman. He's booted two goals. Lock it! Couldn't mark. Kelly first to recover close to the line and over. In the right forward pocket for Sydney. It's just awesome, isn't he? One out. Give him the 50 metre arc to work in. If he had to design a ground to suit Tony Lockett, this would be it. I don't th I think it would be anything that had anything to do with Australian rules football, to be honest. <laughs> anything oval. <laughs> yeah. So in their attacking zone again. Monkhorst and Gray. Wild looking for right, kept in play. Lockett caught behind this time and Kelly just shovels it over for a behind. He was looking for a free kick and uh, still saying, now, come on, wasn't there one there? Shake of the head. No, there wasn't. He's told. 11-5 plays 6-8. Buckley again. Well, he could come out to Paul Williams, who's uh, hardly been sighted today. But Stafford chips in, cuts across, and he's done well, the big man. Dale Lewis shows dash to his captain. Back to Dale Lewis. A shot at goal! Lewis gets his second, and Sydney say, come on, Pies, catch us if you can. 12-5 to 6-8. Great passage of play, and once again, the influence of Greg Stafford, apparent, just bringing the ball to the ground. Smart hands there by Dale Lewis, and he knew that the goals beckoned. I thought he may well have gone with the boomerang, but uh, just split the centre with the drop punt, and what a exciting goal it was, and everybody at the ground now very excited with uh, what they see in the scoreboard. Yes, yeah, dramatic turnaround from that early in that first quarter. Yeah. Francis caught high and will take the free kick in the centre of the ground. Yeah, the Maggies um, really do have to react here. Goes long. Luff in front. And takes a good mark. Goes out wide to Philandia. He has Dyson on further up the ground. Can't get hold of that player in the full. He's now caught. Big turnover here if he can win the ball back Collingwood. Held on is McDonald. And they've done that. They've won a ball. They've won a 50-50, which they're just struggling to do consistently throughout the day. Well, they haven't got a crowded forward line, Colin. Mm. Ends up having to go out wide to Mick McGuan, and he takes it low down. And we'll have to kick from some 50 metres. And nearly all but three players from Sydney are in the defensive 50, and they really have successfully this quarter just blocked up... Uh, the forward line of Collingwood, South Rocker just hasn't got any room to move. It's almost as though they're playing a zone defence there, Jared, rather than man on man. Exactly. All the Collingwood players are on the 50 metre right. Now they chip it in. Almost, but there's just too many Swans players there. There must have been eight Swans players to two Collingwood players in that whole zone there. And to find and pinpoint that, very difficult indeed. Michael Willis, he looks on. Great follower of footy. And the Swans. Stafford, McGuan out of the congestion and off hands and only a point but a free kick free actually kick. so no score and Andrew Dunkley will relieve for the Swans. Well, a real challenge now for Tony Shaw and Collingwood to try and uh, just create some space because Collingwood, Collingwood just haven't got any workable options once they go past the forward 50 and they're not getting it down quick enough to uh, Allow Rocker to get some space. Well, here's a chance now for Richardson Brown. Back to Richardson, 20 metres out. Gives the hand pass away to McDonald. A snap by Alex McDonald. And he has finally kicked a goal for Collingwood. His first and a much needed one for the Pies. Well, they kicked four goals in a hurry, Collingwood, in the first quarter. And they've kicked only three since. And even here, they didn't look instinctive, Collingwood. They were just working the ball around. And finally, Alex McDonald just popped one through on the left. They'd need to get a few in a hurry. Lewis clears the ball out of the middle. Lockett comes to meet it. Kosiska meets him. Ah, oh, but the big fella. <laughs> he stood up to it. He bounced off. <laughs> oh, it was good stuff. Yeah, great think... kick from Dale Lewis just to get it down quickly. He's lifted his uh, form in the 
third quarter, Dale Lewis, getting more possessions. Great way to take it, wasn't it? As the ball came in, quickly grab it and then turn your body. He knew what the answer was coming. It was Krasiska. They both had a little comment to each other. So Lockett for goal number eight. He has pushed it to the right. So his score will remain at seven goals, three. Ten shots at goal. Terrific effort. And once again, Dale Lewis limping there out of the centre. So he's got to his 70% rating. Seven out of ten for the day thus far. He actually looked as if he ran exactly where the ball went on that occasion. So back into play and straight down the throat of Stafford. This is dangerous. Kelly's got it from 40 metres. Paul Kelly, too, is away to the right. Another behind. I've seen Collingwood the last, well, all of their three games this season. And their most uh, impressive feature was their pressure and their willingness to work for each other. That appears to just be missing at the moment. Russell. Goes over the top dangerously so because kick it as hell. And he will blast Sydney into the scoring zone once again. Kelly has marked in the right forward pocket some 45 out. Tony Lockett points at the goal and says there they are. Well, an interesting one because this is a very low percentage shot and if the Swans can just clear a space, just pop it one up for Kelly, they'd almost have to back lock it in. I'm sure he'd be popping it up for Lockett. Well, no, he's going to kick a goal himself. Yeah. Yeah. So the Brownlow medalist gets his second for the quarter after ripping it out of the middle at the very start of the term. Great work there by Kicker to uh, pull that free kick back. And he deliberately set that one up for Kelly's a great overhead mark. And what a fantastic shot at goal from yeah. him. So Collingwood get the goal they wanted, but Swans come back hard with another one to Russell. Great coverage in the centre of the ground. Swings it out wide. Williams pursued by Huskus. And the ball forced out. Tipper uh, Dale Lewis. Uh, we saw yes. him limping before. Yes, uh, Dale Lewis has just taken himself off. Uh, looks like a, uh, with a uh, twisted ankle at the moment. Oh, I think, uh, yeah, hopefully not too serious. Bunkhurst. Over the back to Dyson. Oh, the Swans there, numbers. Huskus very clever with that, does bolt terrifically well. And the wobble kick finds Rocker. And all of a sudden, the thing's happening for the, the Swans. Wobbly kicks fall in front, and uh, yeah, terrific chest mark. He's absolutely gone back a long way. He's a monstrous kick, though. Well, the Sydney Swans launched their new mascot earlier today and the swan is down that end of the ground and tends to go get become a little excited if a goal is scored let's see what happens this time he's kicking from 49 meters and the swan has just dozed off well he burst out onto the ground after the last goal i'm not sure uh, he's allowed to do that he seems to be like dipper a law unto himself <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, disappointing kick in the end it, it went a long way back, he had no trouble with the distance from just inside 50. So, the pro the comeback. Kick it. Beautifully read by Burns. Sets up Watson. Comes out wide when perhaps a kick to the goal square might have been better. And easily counter for there by the Swans. And Brett Seymour knocks it out. Collingwood have uh, pushed Shawball from defence up into the half forward line. He's trying to get a winning formula. From the throw in, Stafford's short kick goes straight to Crow. Tumbles it over the head of Patterson. The defence comes to meet it again, and uh, Andrew Dunkley rode the bump. And it's another throw in. It's a pat on the back from Troy Luff and uh, a slight limp, and no wonder. Stafford again, got a hand to it. Troy Gray takes it to ground. 
and eventually it comes out the back door to Adam Huskis who tumbles it to O'Loughlin. Couldn't take it at the first attempt but he's got Creswell giving him valuable assistance. Through the middle he goes to Rocker. Wants to play on. Here, round here, round here. Now he looks for Lockett in the pocket and he's got him, has he? No. Kelly is there and it's over the line. She's just watching the to bounce down the boundary throwings here. A lot of Collingwood players want to get a kick and do something for the team. They really need to spread out a bit. They really are crowding themselves. Under eight minutes remaining in this vital third quarter. And Collingwood at the moment unable to make any impression on the scoreboard. The margin 35 points. Kick it! Almost coating it! And he'll get a free kick the 35 metres out. Has been goalless to date. Uh, the man who started his career at Central Districts in South Australia. His and the hands just slipped a little bit high there. Sydney well behind in the free kick tally at half time, 18 to 8. They've done quite well this quarter. And if Kickett puts this one through, it'll be a big ask for the Pies to get back in the last. He's going to be kicking from 40 metres. He's usually a pretty deadly left footer. And so he's missed. Usual old story, eh? You give them a rap. Hasn't kicked the goal this year, which is a bit surprising. Andrew Dunkley getting the, uh, the magic spray. Sometimes hurt more than the injuries, isn't it? It's, it's very cold. So that's what it works on, the old <laughs> counter irritant theory. <laughs> Craig Kelly, Rocker in front. Packer players to Dyson. Creswell has to swing it round. C Collingwood players in numbers there and force it through for another behind. And just looking at uh, what Collingwood have done, they've actually kicked one goal only this quarter again and after, that was after one in the second quarter so it's almost been a drought of goals for them after their terrific performance last week against Melbourne. Two goals seven since quarter time. Doesn't win a lot of footy matches does it? Rocker! Not the black and white one, the red and white one and both can jump. I hadn't seen one for a while, Jerry. It's good to... They're back. <laughs> they're back. <laughs> Probably just didn't get quite high enough to uh, be considered for mark of the day on that one, but this could be one of the goals of the day. And isn't it going to be another tipster's nightmare this season? Been quite predictable up until this point. <laughs> but by golly, Sydney are a different side, as are Collingwood this afternoon. No, he's tried to force that again. This one he pulls a bit left, so... A couple of kicks there from a long way out. It's not a high percentage kicking area anyhow from outside 50. Most players do struggle to kick that. He can kick it. And we look at Dale Lewis there in the hands of the trainer with the ice packs around, taking a well-earned drink. And the ball's kicked out wide. Over the back of players. Buckley runs onto it. And Collingwood sets something up here. Brown makes a very good lead in front of him. He's got too much carry on the kick. Can't get now, Fionn finds him. He has to give it away under pressure. And Richardson he really did probably made a bit of a mess of that. Buckley's leg was, was probably too good, really, for Gavin Brown to control it. But I'm sure Tony Shaw would be pleased that at least they cleared the ball from the kick-in away because the they have struggled after being dominant in that area over the first couple of weeks where they were sensational at it. It's been uh, quite ordinary to die today. Yeah, full goal, sixth. They've kicked this quarter of the Swans, and uh, that's a lot of shots at goal. Oh, kick from McDonald, snap. Goal umpire makes too much ground, so that'll be a point. And, well, you can't say it's a much-needed one by Collingwood, but I think they'll be grateful for anything at the moment. 13-10 plays 7-9, with under six minutes remaining. <laughs> Setting himself was Andrew Duncan. Got the ride, that was all. Richardson off to Russell. Russell pops them inside 50, but the only for a moment. Back towards the centre wing and again over the line. It's quite extraordinary when you consider Collingwood kicked 27 goals last year, last week, now, and to date they only managed to kick seven in nearly three quarters of football. Moncourt again looking for Russell, can't get an effective kick away. Stafford towards the boundary line. Crow under pressure to right. 
Graham Wright can swing round. Kick back towards a right half forward. Williams. And it's been a frustrating time for Paul Williams, and he should be careful here. A good player, Shannon Grant. Off he goes. The youngster Grant to Huskus and now Dyson. Orchard shepherded out as Dyson goes towards you know, Lachlan and Schäuble flies across to take the mark. Spears one in towards the centre. It's too low. Kick it is there. However, Collingwood has assistance through Burns. Now maybe something here. Buckley from 46 metres drills one. At last. Buckley gets his first, and can that get the Collingwood machine going? 13-10, plays 8-9. Well, it's really the first time uh, for a quarter and a half that Collingwood have got themselves free with a deliberate shot at goal. They've had a couple that they should have kicked, perhaps, but they've been around the corner. And Nathan Buckley, once again, one of the few players at Collingwood that uh, has performed throughout the whole of this game. Important time now, last few minutes of this third quarter. Collingwood not, not out of touch, still have a chance. Richardson, big jump. And a free goal square back there. Now here comes the Swans again. They're doing this zone effort. It's quite, um, quite amazing what they're doing. As Richardson takes a fine mark. number of swans move forward ahead of the ball kicks it's going to fall short rocker worked out of it now back onto it tries to give it to patterson can't quick kick from patterson doesn't go anywhere there's a whole heap of swans oh bit of panic to crow crow wants to come back on the other side on his left foot and does and has missed so a few of the collingwood players i mean paul williams calling about the ball in the middle there as Crow, probably on his right, right kicking side, which is his left foot. Just missed. Doreen. Well, he's got to be absolutely perfect with that kick, and he wasn't. Out of bounds on the floor. So another chance for Collingwood. In the closing stages of this third quarter. The kick by Patterson looks pretty good. Uh, the Rocker sees it over, it's one behind. And he has a couple of behinds to his credit today. Nicely, everything went through. They're all goals. Yep. Right at the moment, Collingwood really struggling to buy themselves a goal. Doreen has pinpointed Maxfield. Now he can go over the top here. He's got a player loose on centre wing. Gives it back again. That's where they'll go now. And getting there too late on Troy Gray. Gray swings around. He goes to half forward. O'Loughlin got a hand to it. Right does the tidying up at the back. Flicks it high in towards the centre. Luff comes over the top of Richardson. They've still got a chance. Crow had it and then lost it. Brown almost leg gets the hand pass out to the running Francis. 49 metres from home. He goes with a high drop punt, but it's offline to the right and one behind. This is amazing, isn't it? They kicked 27-11 last week. They've already kicked 12 points this week. 8-12, yes. Creswell ignored. He's opted for the long kick. Well, Stafford was the flyer. There's the youngster, Nix, who took a sensational leap earlier in the day. Kelly does the calling out and takes it in front of Locker. Short to Krasiska. Now right, running through the middle as time ticks away. Floating kick to half forward. The only one there is Scotty Doreen. Doreen gives off in the kick it. Has a player running through the middle in Maxfield. And he'll look for Lockett. Favours Lockett. Kelly has to come late. Uses his body pretty well, Lockett. Now recovers. Gray off the ground. And is forced through for a behind. 
So once again, those uh, can move up and down quickly. Great dis defensive effort there by Craig Kelly. He was out of position. Got the big bump from Tony Lockett. He's still got a hand on it. I think the key to this winning position of Sydney has been their pressure on Collingwood's midfield. They're continuing to bomb the ball up in the air as we've seen Graham Wright do a couple of times. Mix. O'Loughlin, the young guns. Lockett. has kicked seven goals, three. Well, this was just a great move from O'Loughlin. You can tell when a player does that sort of thing that he's just got class written all over him. So much time. Sold the fade, and then on the left foot just hit Lockett right where he wanted them, out in front. Chest high. Lace out. <laughs> it's like Malcolm liked it in the old days. Every cliche used. <laughs> That's 1,020 goals he's kicked so far in his illustrious career. Let's see if he can make this number eight as we head towards the siren time in this third quarter. Yes, he can. Eight goals, three to Tony Lockett. Well, if any sort of a steadier was required, Lockett has provided it. Jared. That he has, and uh, courtesy of the young O'Loughlin. And isn't the bird happy? Uh, You've got Dipper dancing in front of the main member's grandstand. I don't know what's worse, actually. And the bird doing it up the, in front of the Don Bradman The stand. bird dance beat or the Dipper dance? Yes, eight goals to Tony Lockett. Really terrific effort. Brown. Ambles over his head. Coming back through traffic is Dyson. A swish at the air from Gray. And we'll have a bounce right back in the middle of the ground, which you don't see very often. Tony Lockett has 8-3. Collingwood has 8-12. Yes. Seth Rocker just really hasn't uh, had a lot of chances, has he? Just hasn't got the production out of that midfield. Swan's so here's another bounce. A, Swan's using an extra man just in defence, yeah. sitting in front of Rocker. Punch. <laughs> How can you see the ball coming back over your head like that? That was just oh. marvellous. Then he smothered it down again. Doreen, hands and knees. <laughs> caught high. No. Caught okay. Does it ball? Definitely caught it. Yeah, well, I, I just got a player in across and um, looked to be a high tackle on Chapman, but it wasn't. He doesn't seem too worried about it. So, last seconds, last minute of this game for three-quarter time. And the kick goes forward again to Buckley. Sets up Williams. Patterson in front and reads it pretty well. We're going to knock off early from over there now. <laughs> Russell running through the centre. Can Collingwood get one before the three-quarter time siren? Sydney have the numbers dropping back. And they are there in force as Brad Seymour steadies and comes away side the open spaces it's three quarter time three quarter time at the SCG Sydney booted five in that term in fact they booted five goals seven to really throw down the challenge to Tony Shaw and Collingwood the Pies booted two goals seven and they've moved to 8-12 so Tony Lockett eight goals three to his credit kick three in the first three in the second two in the third and we may be looking at double figures for the big number four for Sydney this afternoon. Came into this game with just uh, five goals, five next to his name, but has certainly built on that. So this crowd of 17,674 see Sydney at the moment in the box seat. They're 14, 11, 95. Collingwood, 8, 12, 60. In this final quarter, can the Pies get back, Dipper? No, he, d he doesn't think they can. He was very quiet. He was nodding. No, well, that's the main thing. Kelly shrugs one tackle. He was caught from behind, and he's been pinged. So Brown will deliver the football back to the centre. And Peter Carey has just come in and reversed this free kick. Oh, 
he said it was over the shoulder. So we, for the first time in my memory, we've had two of the three umpires uh, disagreeing with each other. Well, well, well. Brett James was away, and now Kelly has the football. He kicks towards a Lockett territory. Oh, Lachlan is waiting down. He didn't have the football. Or did he throw it away? He may have, said the umpire. So we'll play on, and James does to Watson. Watson has a look towards the outer side. Luff is the effective spoiler. Rocker just flicks it away to a teammate there in the Seymour. And he finds plenty of space on that outer wing where O'Loughlin is, and he sees it over the line. It's actually good work by Peter Carey there, as we see Mickey McGuan there on the bench with Gubby Allen mm. and Damien Moncourst. Not the way you'd want to celebrate. He'd want to celebrate his 150th. No, but Peter McCary, the senior umpire, just came in with a decisive uh, move and got the game going again. Mm. Packer plays out wide. Wright forces it to the boundary line and is happy to see it out. So Collingwood really need to get a move on at the start of this last quarter. Rocker. Shawbel. Over the back to Creswell. Quick kick. Goes forward under pressure and pretty well cut out then by Crow. Has Buckley running for him wide. Also has Russell in front of him. So Collingwood can get something going here with some skill. Can take off now. Maxfield in hot pursuit. Kicks. Over all tip players heads and unfortunately breaks down with Doreen. Really has been an architect with his skill. Great chase from Patterson. And switching play quickly catches Collingwood out. Running onto his nicks, trying to draw Rocker, does. Now back to Kelly, and Kelly can go long to Lockett, and why not? Chipping in his crow, and does pretty well to stand his ground. And was that time wasting? And 50 metres? Yes, it is, says Brian Sheehan, as Lockett makes Crow pay for that mark. So this will bring him down almost to the centre of the ground. Paul Williams has been uh, pushed up to the forward pocket. Mark Richardson at full forward. There's the kick in towards Richardson at half forward. Mark paid at the back, however, by Stafford. He's done an excellent job today. Excellent job. Towards Luff. Almost stolen by the good Dr. Watson. Brown in trouble. Kick it, got a hand to it once, twice. Like Darrell White, he's so exciting to watch, and you just don't know what to expect. It's four or five times today he's actually done that. With three kicks going the other way here, so that's a bit of a tragedy. But he's really read the ball well for those little sneaking ones. So Brown has it just on the forward line of centre. He'll look in towards that congested forward zone. Plenty of red and white Guernseys once again, and again at Stafford. And again, Collingwood just breaking down because they haven't got any other option than the long bomb into a crowded forward line. Kick at Waits and has possession. He'll swing onto the left foot. He'll go low to half forward. Finds his target in Creswell. And towards goal over the top of Kelly and into the woodwork for one behind. His first score for the day. And Sydney build 14-12, plays 8-12. Yes, six goal margin. Kelly undecided. Shorts on and goes to Brown. Sets it up with a handball out wide to James. Handball's on to Burns. This is where they've just been great chase from Kelly. Really did put some pressure on that kick. And eventually the ball goes high, falls to Grant, goes across the goals, and <laughs> from the stand. And getting the free kick is Andrew Dunkley. 50. Collingwood's got Sav Rocker out at centre half forward, but his great strength is when he leads to the football. He does tend to struggle when it's above his head. And there's a replay of that free kick. Stafford has just dropped back to centre half back to pick up Sav Rocker. So Dunkley gives it off to Luft. Has Lockett and found Lockett. Oh, touched off by Crow. Well done. Players go to ground. It falls to Kelly. Kelly comes back inside to right. White's got a bit of room to move now. No players leading up the ground, so he just has to kick it, and has found Rocker, almost. Ball falls, they've been good at ground level, the Swans. Out to Kelly. Kelly has Philandia wide, and he can go. Peter Philandia's on centre wing. A little bit of a Barney behind play, but play still goes on. O'Loughlin couldn't get a hand to it. A chance for Schoibel off to Buckley. Nathan Buckley through the centre. 
Collingwood now charge towards the half forward line. They need a mark, but Williams again is well behind. And it's Andrew Dunkley who marks, plays on to Troy Luff on the outer side. He has Shannon Grant going with him, and the youngster takes it. Bounces his way towards centre wing. Orchard gives chase. He gets his kick in time towards left half forward. And Nix sees it over. The young man from West Adelaide in South Australia playing his first game. So a throw in on that outer side. Derek Kickett uh, came off the ground to be replaced by Philandia. Not sure whether he's just having a rest or if he's injured. Well, he's been in exciting touch this afternoon. Well, let's hope for uh, Sydney fans' sake that he's quite OK. James gives it to Wright, and Graham Wright goes from centre wing up towards half forward, and the mark this time taken by Nathan Buckley. Well, Buckley has just uh, worked and worked and worked this afternoon. He's uh, been quite an effective player for Collingwood, but hasn't had too many support staff. Interesting this play from the Swans. They move players from the centre line, wingmen, all in the defence, blocking up holes. Six goals, the margin. Distance is not beyond him here. He's a beautiful kick of the football. But he starts that right. Another behind to Nathan Buckley. He's had a couple out of bounds on the full today. Kicked one goal in the third quarter. So Scotty Doreen comes out wide. Dunkley in front. Great punch from Burns. Falls to Kelly. Oh, he's a good player, Paul Kelly. Gives it off to Luff. Back to centre half forward. Pretty direct play. And sitting over the back is Rocker. Rocker to Lockett. You'd think would be on. And is. Eight goals so far for Big Tony. And Jared, I agree with you. They really have tried to look for him a lot more today. They've, they've done it pretty well. It was a smart kick, and Lockett's a terrific lead. He, he really has committed Kelly to go one way, then ducks back the other. He's had such an open forward line that he's been able to do it really with uh, a fair amount of ease. She take not... nothing away from Kelly. He's really battled hard. But when a fellow with this ability is getting so many opportunities, you are going to cop it in the neck. So Tony Lockett will kick from about 35 metres. Swings back and hits the post. So Tony's disappointed. The Swans crowd's disappointed. Great Kelly's in raptures. <laughs> and the margin back to six goals. 8-4. Lockett. Buckley, ball to ground, be careful, across to McDonald and back to Buckley. Chipping towards Burns, under pressure from Captain Kelly. Burns will take it from halfback. Patterson calls for it short, now they man up. Oh, and he's just a magnificent steal by Andrew Dunkley over the top. Plays on quickly to Creswell, centering kick, and Sydney at the moment have all the answers as Chapman... Looks down towards Philandia in the forward line. He can run on if he wants to. He did think about it for a moment. Now goes back. And Peter Philandia, who started the day on the bench, hasn't gold as yet, has the opportunity to stretch this Sydney lead. Paul Williams, dismal day for him. Quiet day, and at the moment on the bench. Philandia from just outside 40 metres. A drop punt that goes across the face for one behind. Jude, I was just thinking about that play that the Swans have used today where they've pushed all those players down. This is one ground where you can probably afford to do that, isn't it? You can get down the ground quickly when there's a setup rather than a play on. Well, certainly better than most, and because it's a little bit tighter at the ends, your uh, zone defence is more effective. And pretty tough, I would think, to orchestrate it at Waverley. Yes. Byrne started this and gets it back through the middle. Direct kick into the forward line, and a very, very good mark dropping back is Adam Huskis. And how many times have we seen that? Only in this quarter, let this alone what's happened the rest of the game. Stafford to Seymour. Grant in front, and Crow Lake can't get there. But good enough to stand his ground. I like the move of this fellow onto the back line. So creative. He can kick plenty of goals, so that's another opportunity for the Sydney. But they've opted to go with uh, O'Brien in that one. I bet you uh, that Rodney Ead has changed his mind about coaching in the past couple of weeks. <laughs> After being belted by 90 points and then 29 last week, it looks as though he's going to be a big winner today. So 
Welcome to the winning coaches panel, Rocket Eid, as Francis has James going past for Collingwood. They're battling it right out to the end. Here's Graham right on the outer side. The elusive bouncing ball is going to put him under a ton of pressure. Orchard also feeling the heat. And the Sydney tackling from the opening bounce today has been quite fierce. That's got to be Scott 50. Scott McLaren is going to come across. That should be 50. I think it's going to be. If you leg somebody with your hand, let's just have a look. Well, there it is. Which means he should be kicking from about two yards out. Nevertheless, he gets a shot from 52 out. Well, maybe a little more than that, and uh, it's too far for him, so he elects to go to Graham Wright, who is also too far out. Rocker will drop back. As all these Swans players move down again. Yeah. I mean, this has been quite effective today. Great ploy from Rodney E. Monkhorst in the square now. Monkey charges forward. Maxfield was in front of him. Buckley at the back. Snaps for Collingwood. And finally, he's put through one for the Pies. Buckley gets his second. And Collingwood get their ninth. Didn't work on that occasion, Jared. But uh, I guess that's going to happen, isn't it? But if you can keep his side to nine... It's not going to win a lot of games of footy. No, you're not. And really, at least the Swans brought the ball to the ground. That should have been a mark to Adam Huskus. And it was really only better crumbed by Nathan Buckley. It's amazing perhaps it hasn't been brought in sooner, the set play in defence. So 31-point margin to the Swans. Brown with a quick kick out of the centre. But the ball will come back and go to a Swan. And I think it's Stafford will receive this free kick. Goes, kicks long. Rocker underneath it. Can't grab hold of it. O'Loughlin overruns it. Now gives it back to O'Loughlin. Clever handball inside to Chapman. Puts Philandia under a bit of pressure. He's forced to go wide. Terrific stuff from Gavin Brown, trying to lead from the front. And really holds up what was a half chance there for the Swans. So the skipper gets a pat on the head from his teammates. And like we've often said, Jared, every goal is important. Can mean something at the end of the year. Percentage could be tight. Everything's worth fighting for. Kick out. Really does set it up for the Swans. If you can just finish off, can't. Goes to lock it. Quick kick around the body and just a point Ooh. resulted. And young Matthew Nix running through there done a couple of impressive things but it's been a great fillip for the competition this one hasn't it if a club in Melbourne loses two or three in a row they have tended to go into crisis but if the Swans are three love the competition's almost in crisis Buckley on centre wing takes it from James to Francis well done by Huskis got the hand pass away to Gray who was a late inclusion into this side Swings it inside towards half forward. Big pack of players there. No one able to complete the mark. But tackling, look, two of them. That's a gang tackle by Sydney. And down the bottom there is Brad Seymour. Picks himself up. And the bounce to take place midway during this final turn. Sydney chart again goes up. They're in control of the situation. Severio Rocker on the ball. Misses it. Comes wide towards Nathan Buckley. Orchard gets a bad bounce. Creswell gives it off to Philania, who's got Scotty Doreen running. Doreen over the head of O'Loughlin. Out comes oh. Tony Lockett. He charges into Gavin Krasiska. They did have a little bit of a bump earlier on in the day. Right. Under pressure. Out of bounds, is it? But not on the floor. Throw in on the outer side. Sydney by 32 points. For their first win of the year. It was such an important day for them today. It means so much as far as membership drives, sponsorship is concerned. Gray, a high kick in towards the pocket. And Crow takes the mark. Comes back towards Burns. Who's got right going in the middle. Look out, Graham, you're gone. You are gone. And away they go. Paul Kelly sets sail on the hand, and there is the day for Sydney. Well, I think it was 
pretty fitting that uh, Paul Kelly kicked the goal because he, more than uh, any other player over the last couple of weeks, and uh, in particular the last couple of years, has battled his uh, guts out for this club. Won the Brownlow medal last year, and that was just an outstanding performance from the skipper. Yes, the tale of beliefs, and uh, today the Swans have really believed that they are a chance, and Collingwood has just been soaked of that belief as Crow gets the free kick, cross half back, kicks out wide. Tell you have done this a bit, haven't they, Collingwood? Just uh, got players out wide. Back to Burns. He now goes long. And Richardson almost. Out of bounds. Well, it does set up next Sunday's game uh, as a big one, doesn't it, with Richmond and the Swans at the MCG. He's in a pod. Yes. Monker started so well. Spent some time off the ball. Kick it about to come back on to Malcolm. So he's OK. Philandia. Needed to have his fresh legs, isn't he? I mean, he's been uh, got some touches to Gray. Kicks long. Just doesn't quite hit the ball right. Oh. Kelly can't grab hold of it. Rocket can, almost. Now he's in trouble. <laughs> Goes back 30 metres with a fantastic handball to Dyson. He's under pressure. Almost leg to Maxfield. Kicks up high. Oh, oh. great kick. One player there. One only. And it's Troy Gray. And the Swans. With the Kelly goal, Mr. Sealer, I think this is the padlock. Great kick there by number 11, Maxfield who has run with Nathan Buckley for a lot of this game. Buckley's had uh, plenty of kicks, as has Maxfield. He's kicking it just occasionally lets him down, but uh, that was a ripper. So Troy Gray, who came in to replace Paul Ruse, gets his opportunity to get his first goal on the board. A kick from uh, probably 20-odd metres. It's not a bad kick normally. And he's kicked it beautifully into the post. A great behind, wasn't it? <laughs> As behinds go, I think it's probably made him safe, though. And, uh, that extra point just might help. But yeah, disappointing day for Collingwood after the euphoric rise of last week, and now it's Swan's turn. So Stuart mentioned earlier, it's a tipster's nightmare sometimes. Footy Burns has it on half back, kick it on the mark. As we said, coming back out onto the ground, so appearing to be okay. Just with Mick McGuan on the bench, he was sensational in the first half last week. Only four touches in the second half, and I just wonder whether he carried something into this game because he really wasn't the mighty Mick Wan that we've no. seen over the last couple. No, and it's very hard to play 22 good ones, let alone 22 great ones. Mark Orchard at the bottom of that pack. There's Brian Sheehan. Comes in for a bounce. On centre wing, Stafford's got to try and beat a couple. Kelly ripped off the football, it spills free just for a moment. And another bounce. Rocker and Stafford. Burns eventually does it down to James off the Patterson. This looks promising. Pulls the kick. Oh, oh, God, that. Look at that behind part. And he does not blink an eyelid. Well, they better have a shot while they can, Colin, because they could miss that. Look at this. Didn't snap it like Lee Matthews. No. Famous one at Windy Hill, wasn't it? McGuan is back out on the ground. And he kicks into the pocket where McDonald has the football. Well, if he misses to the left... As far as goals are concerned, he will get it behind because he's got double the area now. The boundary umpire on the point post has got a sore neck. <laughs> Amazing, who's this one set up again? It's quite interesting, this. This is a little bit new. Have players in zones all coming down when you set plays like this. Right. There are only two players. Sorry, Sandy. Four no to the right. centre. It's a lovely kick by Graham Wright, and he has put it straight through the middle.
First goal to Graham Wright. And with just four minutes remaining, Collingwood at 10-13, Sydney 15-16. Well, just uh, picking up on that point, I wonder if they're actually in zones or they're just basically got a blueprint. We want a player in every over every 10 metres. It'd be uh, obviously it's going to be studied more and exposed more now that we've seen it. But it has worked particularly well. So the kick out of the centre and Craig Kelly giving some attention there to Shannon Grant. Goes out wide. Philandia getting some touches and ships it nicely to Creswell. Oh, a player in a heap of space. This is Nix. Kicks long. O'Loughlin almost. And the ball falls over the back. Tried to keep it in play was Rocker. Ooh. He's actually kept it in play. O'Loughlin smart enough to recover. Gives it back to Gray on his left foot. Now caught. And the boundary line beat them all. But holding the ball's been given. As Brian Shan said that he did have enough time. And really ran out of room on the boundary line. Kick wide to Crow. Of space in front of him to McDonald. No one leading, no one coming at him. Four and so he has to wait and has to wait again for Crow to come through. There's a hole in the middle, doesn't see it. it was Patterson sitting underneath it? Dunkley. What a great pair of hands. Fantastic game he's played too. Yes, he's been like the rock of Gibraltar. Kelly has been inspirational. Pops it over the top to the youngster, Shannon Grant. We can run down that outer wing with a couple of bounces. Thought about another, now just pops it over the top. They surge it down towards Darren Creswell. Best and fairest from a couple of years ago. He spears it into Lockett. Well, the locking, Lockett leading has just been uh, outstanding. Once again, he wrong-footed Craig Kelly by his charging up the middle and then ducks back towards the boundary line. A great kick there from Darren Creswell. And great movement of the ball. Right from Dunkley at full back through to this shot at goal. Eight goals, four to his credit to date. From 12 kicks. And he's pulled that too, I think, to the left. It's another behind. Well, Malcolm, you've been in the death seat at a couple of clubs as coach. Uh, what were the feelings <laughs> of uh, yeah, Rodney uh, Eade uh, From, sorry, Jared? From Rodney Eade, his feelings right now. <laughs> Very happy man, I can assure you. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, good luck to him, too. I mean, it's uh, yeah, it's always tough. Tough caper. Richardson. Oh, Kicks good mother. smother by uh, Huskis. The superb pickup. Well done to Kelly. Another one here. They're in charge as Rocker turns around. He wants to give Lockett another chance. I don't think he can get there in time. It's Krasiska who pushes towards the line. And over in Sydney's left forward pocket. Well, once again, I think it's a belief thing. I mean, you've got to have the confidence in what you're doing. And I think if you persevere, I mean... You can easily run away from it, you can read all the stories, but really what you do is just knuckle down, talk, sit down, talk with all the players, and get on with it. I mean, you, otherwise you go nuts. <laughs> and you do anyhow, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so regardless of most results. But having seen them uh, in Adelaide in their first game, it was just unbelievably poor to this, where they've just been fantastic. I couldn't believe that form, though, could we? I mean, you, you just, you know, you just have to put those out of your mind, I think. You couldn't believe them play that badly. Kelly tries to work hard and another boundary throw in almost now. I think it's also important to real remember that uh, Mark Bays who goes straight back into the side is missing. Paul Ruse who was one of their better players last week uh, is also missing and a few of their younger players have really stood up and been counted today. Yes on the other hand Collingwood at Philandia as he kicks the ball back. Oh good mark from Crow. As players wide, tends to look down the ground a fair bit, trying to draw players here. Now has Buckley. And done this a lot, haven't they? Come away out wide, switch play. But their forward line's been a real disaster, though, because there just hasn't been the options. Right, kick short, back to Crow. And chip. Now, they do all right to here, and this is where all the Swans players now head down towards defence. So four players once again ahead of centre. And Francis has to find a spot. See, that's where they zone. There's plenty of players there. Russell, terrific on the ground. Gone. Now gone. Absolutely gone. Full play on. Grant kicks it out wide. Buckley the only player back here. 
has to wait for it, can't control it. Smart kick to James, gives it to Wright, and Wright, looking forward, goes long. Kelly up forward now, takes the mark. No, he doesn't. Great chase from Dunkley, and that's how he's played all day. What certainly looked like a Kelly mark, Dunkley knocked away out of bounds. Sydney fans loving what they're seeing this afternoon. The many Collingwood fans have made the journey north. They've been disappointed in this 2000th game. And also Mick McGowan, one of the club's favourite sons, 150th, as Scotty Russell puts it over the line. Left forward pocket for Collingwood. The shadows lengthen across this ground. Rocker tries to take it out of the air and have a shot, but he will run out of time. Sydney fans ecstatic with this win. of Sydney and also the more senior players there's Adam Huskus Paul Kelly what an inspirational leader he is quite fantastic Tony Lockett eight goals for Dipper I can see down on the ground as Tony Lockett leaves the arena he's got uh, the Sydney captain with him Dipper thanks very much Andy well firstly uh, Paul what a fantastic win by the boys and a much needed one of that yeah we did mate you know we had a little bit start the season and uh, and bucks up against the wall and, and become good today. And your own form has been, been fantastic once again. Uh, a lot of pressure's on you being uh, the Brownlow Millers last year. We know what it's like. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a bit of pressure there, mate. But, uh, you know, I just got my job and, and the other blokes, the teammates, are taking the pressure off me, so it's good. We're very impressed today in the defensive work. You've uh, actually uh, worked out some sort of zone. Uh, oh, yeah, we, you know, every team does a bit of work on their kick-out zones. And, and today, uh, ours worked well against their kick-outs. Well, enjoy the win, uh, Paul. Well done, buddy. Good on you. Thanks, mate. Thank you, Dipper. There are huge <laughs> cheers. But as uh, Sydney leave the arena, unfortunately, the cheers weren't for the players. It was for uh, an enthusiastic gentleman who's just sprinted from one side of the ground to the other and eluded all. A marvellous run. And uh, speaking of marvellous runs, the mascot is doing a little victory dance. Stafford, excellent today. Troy Luff became a father yesterday, we believe. And this is a big performance by Sydney. Victorious 15-17-107. Collingwood 10-13-73.